In this session, we are going to discuss phases of a compiler. Compiler is nothing but a software. It is a system software and this particular compiler does compilation. So, it takes a source program as input and it produces the target program or object program as output after doing the compilation or translation. You know that is that is another software which can do the translation is known as interpreter. And interpreter means where each and every line of the program during execution will get translated to the respective machine code and the code will get executed. So, that is my interpreter, but here it is our compiler where the full program will get compiled by the software compiler and object program or target program will be produced and later the program will be executed. So, that is the compilation process and this compiler is falling in the system software category. Operating system, loader, linker are other examples of system software because it is directly involving with the system architecture. Good. Now, the phases of a compiler can be depicted using this famous diagram. This diagram is very famous. So, here we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 phases and there are two other supporting modules are there. One is the error handler and the one is the symbol table manager. So, let me discuss one after another. So, the source program will be taken by the compiler as input as I told earlier. So, at first it will be going for the lexical analyzer. Frankly speaking, lexical analyzer can also be called as token analyzer. That means, let us suppose say in case of Java or say C programming language, let us suppose we are taking one um, statement say A is equal to B plus C semicolon. So, in case of lexical analyzer phase, this A is equal to B plus C semicolon will be done through the token analysis, will be processed through the token analysis. So, it will be written in this way A, B and C as they are the variables or identifiers. So, it will be it will be the tokens will be generated in this way identifier, assignment operator, identifier, algebraic operator, identifier, punctuation symbol because I had semicolon at the end. So, identifier, assignment operator, identifier, algebraic operator, identifier and punctuation symbol. So, in this way each and every code will be will be doing the respective token analysis. So, this is also known as token analyzer. That means, whatever the statement we are giving to this particular lexical analyzer, each and every st uh, statement will be consisting of multiple collection of multiple tokens at the output of this lexical analyzer. Obviously, if the tokens are uh, parsable, if you give us something which is not cannot be parsed by the high level language obviously then it will consult with the error handler. So, output of this particular lexical analyzer will be nothing but series of tokens if the sentence is in accordance to the high level language. In case of syntax analyzer, it will check whether this generated tokens are in the proper order, are in the logical order or not. So, according to the syntax, the word syntax means grammar. G R A M M A R grammar. So, whether this token occurrences are according to the grammar of the language or not that will be analyzed by this syntax analyzer. So, syntax analyzer will generate syntax error if it finds that it is not in the proper sequence. Say, I am writing A plus B is equal to C semicolon. Obviously, it error is there A plus B is equal to C semicolon. But lexical analyzer cannot detect any error because it will just detect identifier, algebraic operator, identifier, assignment operator, identifier and then punctuation symbol. So, it will pass it as it is a good one, it is a good uh, all the tokens are valid. But in case of syntax analysis when this particular token sequence will come, it will detect that it, it, is, out, it is not in accordance with the grammar of the language. So, it will produce some error message. In the semantic analyzer, you know the semantic means meaning, the word semantic means meaning. So, semantic error that means a meaning error has taken place. 
Then I suppose I am writing A is equal to B by C. So, syntactically the statement is correct, but if C is equal to C is having the value 0, then semantic error will take place because division by 0 is illegal. So, that is why in case of semantic analysis what will happen I am just telling you let us suppose I am writing A is equal to B plus C where A is a float, B is of the type float and C is not of the type float let it be of the type integer. Then this integer data will be typecasted automatically internally by this particular compiler in this sem semantic analyzer phase to the respective float data type so that the addition can be done accordingly. So, that will be done that will be handled by this semantic analyzer. In case of intermediate code generator, now we are having code generator here this is my intermediate code generator. Now, what will happen here each and every high level language statement will be consisting of one or more than one three at the statements or the program will be written in some intermediate language mostly we go for the three at this statement. So, what is the three at this statement here we will be having three addresses other than the operator. So, operator will be there and then we will be having our source operand 1, source operand 2 and we are having the target operand. So, in this way the three address code will get generated. So, detailing about all these three address code how we are having the three address code and quadruples, triples we will be discussing each and every one in our next videos. For the timing just remember that this intermediate code generator will translate each and every line to our respective intermediate language. Then code optimizer will come. We are having a separate chapter in our compiler book known as code optimization and there are so many different techniques. Now, what is the code optimization? Obviously, as a programmer, as a developer I shall try to write my best code, but if there is some scope of doing further optimization then compiler will exert its effort to make the code more optimized. I am giving you one or two examples. Let us suppose there is a particular statement which is executing within a loop and which is loop invariant. I think I am not getting. Let us suppose there is one loop for i is equal to 1 to 10 and there is one variable I am writing the code here say. So, for i is equal to 1 to 10, 1 to 1000. So, some, some writing here say uh, count is equal to 1000. So, many instructions are there. Then I am writing print uh, i and count and some other instructions are there. So, I am getting j is equal to count start 10. Some other instructions are there and that is the end of the for loop. So, look at this particular code. Here you see here we have used count either on the right hand side of some algebraic expression or using or printing someone somewhere, but I am not initializing count or reinitializing count with any other value in this particular code and count has got initialized, initialized with a constant and this constant will remain same for all values of i. So, in case of code optimization this line will be put outside of the computation outside of this particular looping. So, the count is equal to 1000 will be coming down here. So, count is equal to 1000 will be coming down there and then this particular line, this particular line will get deleted. Actually, it will take the code motion and that is known as elimination of loop invariant computation. Let us suppose I am having this one say a i plus 1 So, a programmer has written this particular code. Now, compiler can convert it to in this way elimination of induction variables, elimination of common sub expressions, elimination of loop invariant computation, doing code motion. There are so many different ways where the compiler will do the code optimization. So, code optimization is the term is not actual the term should be code betterment and that will be done from the compiler's end. That means, whatever the program you are writing that program is not getting executed in the meantime the compiler is bringing the better version of the program if it is so if it if it can be then the better version of the program is getting compiled and later it will get executed. 
and last one is the code generated. In this particular phase, the actual translation will be done with respect to the in accordance with the physical register names or physical register numbers. So, de depending upon the target architecture, this particular code generation will take place so that the code can get executed in the target ar architecture. So, we are having the lexical analyzer can also be called as a tokenizer or token analysis phase where the tokens will get generated only. The sequences will not be checked, only it will be checked whether this particular this particular item can be converted or can be interpreted as a token or not. So, that is the lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer will check whether these tokens are in the proper order in accordance with the grammar of the language. Semantic analyzer will do the meaning, meaning checking. So, if some auto type casting has to be done, that will be done in the semantic analyzer phase. Semantic, this word is having the meaning, meaning. So, intermediate code generator will write this particular program in some intermediate language and most common language is our three address instruction code. How to write this three address instructions code will be coming that one later. Then code optimization optimizer will do the code optimization so that it will go for the code betterment and then code generated will come into the play. Here it will be writing this code in the physically existing register names and depending upon the architecture this code will get generated and that will bring you the target program. During this particular phases, execution of these phases, we are having this symbol table manager. Different labels go to 100, that is one statement, go to 100, 100 is a label. Say count is equal to count plus 1, this count is nothing but an identifier. So, different labels, identifiers will be kept in the symbol table. So, let us suppose we were using a variable without defining the variable at the top in case of Java or C programming. So, in those cases what will happen? It will produce some error message. Who will tell that this error, this particular variable whatever you are using, they it has not got defined prior. So, from the symbol table we can easily get the idea that these are the variables defined at the beginning of the program or on that very particular scope within the block. So, now it is usable within that block. So, symbol table manager will do this, uh, will take this responsibility. And error handlers, you know that computer, if you if you compile our program, we are going to get so many different types of errors, so many. Say we are having syntax error, we are having say error like say L value required, we are having say error message like say uh, label not seen, label not seen, that is one error message. We are having error say variable not defined, we are having say error say semicolon missing. So, so many error messages are there. Just feel that if compiler produces the same error message, say error, 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 do not try to make it again. So, if compiler produces only one error message, then as a programmer, as a developer, as a debugger, it will be quite difficult to get the nerve of that particular error message. What is the, what is the source of that error? So, that is why it is quite appreciable that compiler will produce different types of error messages so that you can get the idea what should be the source and how to rectify it, how to debug it, how to make a program error free. So, this error handler is playing a very vital role and those languages who are not producing intelligent error messages are very difficult to do the coding for them. I am having such experiences. So, there is an error handler and there is my symbol table manager which will keep the trace of different labels, different variables, different literals. So, they will be kept, the trace will be kept in this symbol table manager. Symbol table manager is nothing but a data structure where you are going to keep all such information. We will be having a separate video on this symbol table manager. So, these are the phases are there. Frankly speaking, they are nothing but each and every chapter of, of your book almost. So, we are having some, some dedicated chapters for this particular phases. And in the next, in the next video, we shall put one example and I shall show you that, that in different phases, how a sample code is getting interpreted, how the sample code is getting modified. Okay, please be with, the, with us so because the next video is the continuation of this particular topic. Thanks for watching this one.